Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be talking to you today about one of the new features in Mudbox 2010. So with the 2010 there's some improvements in the stencils. As a matter of fact it fixed a lot of things that uh, was there before. So now if you uh, use a stencil for example let me subdivide this object to a higher level. So imagine if you have like a, a temple or something and now I'm having a, uh, a mirror sculpt is activated and I'm just going to use a stencil that I have here and you see now with that enabled you can sculpt using the mirror and a stencil with no problem so that feature has been added as a new thing and you can see now you can easily create uh, lots of work here like uh, engraved uh, sculpt on, on a temple it can be done very very fast you can even also do uh, for example if I have this uh, image here if you look at the stencil, the stencil actually sits underneath the camera. That's why it's always attached to the camera. You can also modify it here and go to under the advanced option and enable use tileable. If my image was already been created tileable, then then this will accommodate it. So and you can see you can easily work with it very very easy and very very fast. Also, this applies painting. You see in here, you can use the same idea if you have an image, for example, something like this, and we do a paint projection. you can easily paint the colors on a mirror using a stencil. So imagine if you have like a library of eyes or eyebrows or mouth that you want to have in your character, you can just usually just brush them and you can easily here see that these stencils now accommodate transparency. So if you have something that's really fine and you can detail it in Photoshop and just bring it up in here. So there's a lot of improvement in the stencil. This works for the uh, both paint and sculpt. Uh, you can use the tileable you can use it with the mirror as well. One thing I thought I should mention while we talk about the uh, painting and stencils is that when you actually do a painting, uh, this painting is not related to vertex. It actually, it's you're painting a texture map. So for example, if I go to the wireframe and uh, turn off smooth shading. Oh, and by the way, as you notice now, the uh, artifacts or the bug that would, is there with drawing artifacts when you're doing hard edges, it's gone now. So everything looks nice if I rotate around. But again, back to the subject of painting is that uh, you can paint as much, as big as you want. For example, if I do paint, I can do 2048 here and I do a projection. Let's, and you can see it just projecting nicely. I can also do another map but this time I drop it to 256 for example. so even though the projection is still nice if I paint this you will see it now very low quality you have also the ability and this is going to be beneficial for game engines that you can do for under the preference uh, render and turn off use texture filter so now when I do another paint here this will allow you to view the texture as you will view it in the game engine so there's no filtering or even when you open it in Photoshop there's no filtering whatsoever on it so that will give you a better idea how your texture will look like once you take it to the engine uh, so also another interesting point here if you haven't noticed uh, you can stack or reorder the uh, layer stack so if you can just middle mouse and drag it so now layer 2 is on top so if I go back and paint here this is on the lower one I can go now to the top one and you'll see the difference in high quality right there so it will remember which one that it's used at the time you have also the uh, clone brush and the same way that the hotkeys that you use in uh, Photoshop you just press control to pick which area that you want to, uh, to clone from and you start cloning and you see it's working however one thing interesting that you should be aware of see what's going to happen when I move to the low area even though that I'm painting on the high res, it's just looking at whatever underneath the clone brush is and it's just taking it. So if that is low, it's going to take it as well. So this one thing that you need to put in mind when you use that, if you're, if you're not using obviously the same sizes of pictures, it's going to be cloning from a low quality to the higher one. I hope you guys enjoyed this session and I'm looking forward to talk to you more.